Welcome to Now in Android, episode 40, special Google I.O. 2021 edition. If you haven't seen them already, be sure to check out the Google Keynote, the Developer Keynote, and the What's New in Android talk. You will learn all about the Android 12 Beta 1 update with its sparkly ripple effect and stretched over scroll, Jetpack Compose hitting 1.0 stable in July, the Material Due announcement, Android Studio Arctic Fox reaching beta, Kotlin as the most used language by professional Android devs, using 80% of top 1000 apps, or the fact that over 84% of the top 10,000 apps are now using a Jetpack library. If you haven't seen them yet, do it now. We'll wait for you. Okay, here we are again. Exciting stuff, huh? Apart from all that, here is some news that you might have missed from other I.O. talks. Let's first talk about Jetpack. The LDR of the What's New in Jetpack talk is that Camera X, Hilt, Paging 3, Constraint Layout, Motion Layout, Security Crypto, and Fragment libraries were promoted to stable. Data Store and Compose are in beta, and there are new libraries we welcome to the Jetpack family. App Search, which is a new on-device search library which provides high-performance search functionality, and Macro Benchmark, that extends Jetpack's benchmarking coverage to app startup and integrated behaviors like scrolling performance. With this API, you can check metrics depending on the compilation mode, such as the worst or best case, and the startup mode, such as hot, warm, or cold. For more information, check out Measuring Junk and Startup with Macro Benchmark Talk. Also, the new version of Work Manager 2.7 that is now in alpha targets the Android 12 SDK and provides additional support for the platform's new foreground restrictions. See the effective background tasks on Android Talk for more details. Ah, I almost forgot about this. If you're using the navigation library, make sure to check out the multiple backstack support in the latest alpha version. Everyone is very excited with Jetpack Compose hitting 1.0 stable in July. But do you know that you don't have to change your app architecture if you don't want to when adopting Compose? If you're interested in this, check out the Using Jetpack Libraries in Compose talk. Compose comes with integration with the most popular libraries, including Navigation, Kotlin Flows, Hilt, and more. Compose also offers an implementation of Material Design. To take advantage of what it offers, check out the Build Beautiful Material Design apps with Jetpack Compose talk. What else? The team released two new code labs, Compose Navigation and Compose Testing. If you are interested in learning Compose, check out our curated learning path. But there is also the workshop that takes you through the basics of building your first app with Compose in video format. The first beta of Android 12 contains the biggest design changes since we introduced material design back in Android 5.0, including a substantial refresh to the way app widgets work and look. And this includes dynamic colors that you can apply to your widget by using the system's theme. Make sure you investigate how your app behaves with the new system-wide stretch overscroll effect since it only applies to a single scrolling container. Check out the refreshing widgets IO talk for more information. Apps that scan for Bluetooth devices in Android 12 will no longer need location permissions thanks to the new Bluetooth scan permission with the never for location attribute. And this should really help reduce app friction and the number of apps that need to use location permissions. Speaking of location, users can now select to give your app an approximate location even if you request the find location permission. We talked about upcoming privacy features in Beta 2, including a user-visible privacy dashboard, new microphone and camera indicators and toggles, and a clipboard red notification. The What's New in Privacy IO talk has more on all of this. The beta also introduced performance class capabilities, and this is for devices that support more demanding use cases, particularly around media capabilities. Now, you can test the Android 12 beta in the emulator on Pixel 3 Plus devices and on select devices from a variety of device partners. Android Studio Arctic Fox comes with a lot of new stuff and is available in the beta channel now. It comes with Compose support, great tooling to accelerate Compose development, layout inspector support for Compose, and a built-in accessibility scanner. 
but also the list of supported devices have increased, including foldable emulators, remote control for Android TV, peering wizard for Wear OS, and more. Android Studio also wants to boost your productivity, and that's why the team added a Background Tasks Inspector, Kotlin Coordinates Debugger, and Kotlin Symbol Processing Support. See all of this and more in action in the What's New in Android Development Tools talk. For more in-depth information about constraint layout and motion layout improvements, and the available Compose tooling in Android Studio, check out the What's New in Design Tools talk. The Kotlin adoption in the Android Devs community is outstanding. We love Kotlin, you love Kotlin, everyone loves Kotlin. A couple of new things worth mentioning from the State of Kotlin talk are Kotlin Symbol Processing and the new Lifecycle APIs to collect flows from the UI layer. Kotlin Symbol Processing KSP, aims for faster builds and making Symbol Processing a first-class feature in the Kotlin ecosystem. No more JavaScript generation via KAPT and associated long build times. KSP integrates with the Kotlin compiler and provides access to all Kotlin symbols. And the best part? KSP has now reached beta status, which means its API surface is complete. We invite authors of plugins that are currently using KAPT to start migrating to KSP. Our own Jetpack Room library has KSP support in beta, and we are seeing two times faster processing with KSP than we saw through KAPT. KSP was recently featured on the ADV podcast, so make sure to give it a listen if you want to learn more. The latest version of the Lifecycle Runtime KTX library includes the repeat on Lifecycle coroutine APIs that are Lifecycle aware. The API is in charge of cancelling or restarting a block of code when the Lifecycle reaches or falls below a certain state. This works differently than the launch when started API that suspends execution and keeps upstream flows active when the view is in the background. The new APIs help your app be more efficient by not wasting resources in certain scenarios. With these APIs, we have a complete story for using Flows in Android in all layers of the app. If you are planning to migrate to Flows, check out the migrating from Live Data to Kotlin Flows blog post. We announced a bunch of things to make it easier to target large screen devices such as tablets and Chrome OS devices and foldables, including an updated fold-aware sliding pane layout, which really simplifies the implementation of list detail views, along with a new vertical navigation rail component for landscape large screens, because you never have enough vertical resolution, uh, max width values or commonly overstretched material components such as buttons, text fields, and sheets, along with a bunch of new guidance. So check out what's new in foldables, tablets, and large screens for more. The next version of Wear is coming, and we've got a bunch of new tooling, including a new preview emulator system image, a pairing assistant to simplify pairing Wear emulators to other devices from within Android Studio. We have a virtual heart rate sensor. And we also have the ongoing activities API and tiles to give more ways for users to interact with your app. We have a new health services platform, which we created in collaboration with Samsung and Alpha for you to integrate with, and new Jetpack APIs, such as curved text, watch faces, complications, and remote interactions to simplify building for wear. The What's New in Wear talk explains all this and more. In the past, you might have seen tests passing on your CI server, but failing locally in Android Studio or vice versa. These situations can lead to losing confidence in testing and obviously affects productivity. One of the reasons was because Android Studio and the Android Riddle plugin implement different versions of the Android instrumented test runner. One of the improvements in Android Studio, Arctic Fox, is that all tests from Android Studio will run through the Android Riddle plugin so that you see a consistent behavior. This is amazing. What about Nitrogen? What's happening with Project Nitrogen? I cannot count the number of times we've been asked about it. Nitrogen is no longer a thing. Welcome the Unified Test Platform, UTP, which is an extensible test executor for running Android tests at scale from Android Studio and the Android Riddle plugin. 
One such feature enabled by UTP is Gradle Managed Virtual Devices, which lets you define devices using Gradle DSL. Another feature is running tests across multiple devices in parallel to help improve the scalability of your test execution. Lastly, you can get an emulator snapshot for test failures so that you can restore its state later and see what went wrong. Learn more about testing in the What's New in Android testing tool stock. On Android TV, Cast Connect now has stream transfer and expansion, and we have a new emulator running Android 11, and Android 12 Beta 1 is available on ADT3 devices. The What's New in Android TV and Google TV talk has more about Android on the 80 plus million active TV devices out there. Android's getting an updatable, fully integrated ML inference stack. TensorFlow Lite for Android and the Neural Networks API will now be delivered using Google Play services. And this allows your app to reduce its APK size and take advantage of newer, higher performance versions without having to publish a new APK. TF Lite, NN API, and associated chipset drivers will be updated independent of the platform version. And this should lead to more consistent drivers and APIs across the Android ecosystem. TF Lite 2.3 also adds a compatibility list to help it know where running on the GPU or accelerator is likely to give your model a performance boost. We announced that automatic acceleration is coming, which uses that list along with metadata provided by your model to determine whether to run it on a CPU, GPU, or other accelerated backend. For more on all that's new in on-device ML on Android, head on over to the What's New in Android Machine Learning Talk. Feel like game developer stuff was largely missing from I.O. this year? Well, that's because the Google for Games Developer Summit is coming on July 12th through 13th. You can register for free and learn about all that cool game dev stuff that we didn't talk about at I.O. We've gotten lots of questions about Google Play policy, policy changes, and what to do about policy violations over the years. And now there's a new policy and program section in the Play Console that brings together policy and enforcement information in one place. There's also a new SDK console in Google Play that lets SDK providers report issues, such as non-compliant or out-of-date SDK versions. The Android Gradle plugin 4.0 Plus can auto-report which SDKs your app has as dependencies if you publish using App Bundle, and this allows Play to do things like notify you when an SDK update is recommended. Later in the year, we plan to launch a new website to help you choose the right SDK for your app. The Play Billing 4.0 library release enables new features such as multi-quantity purchases and multi-line subscriptions, and these bundle multiple products as part of a single subscription. Updates to existing billing-enabled apps will require at least the previous Play Billing 3.0 library as of November 1st of this year, while new apps need to move to Play Billing 3.0 Plus by August 2nd. There have been a couple of new episodes of our Android Developers Backstage podcast posted since the last Now in Android. ADB released episode 163, where the whole gang chatted with Nat Duca and Samir Kataria from the Android graphics team around topics such as shaders, GPUs, Vulkan, OpenGL, Angle, Drivers, Blur, Pixels, and of course, Chet's favorite topic, Colors. Episode 164 is the first in the new miniseries, ADBC on Jetpack Compose, which dives deep into different topics in Android's future UI toolkit. This time, Nick and Chet talked with Adam Powell and Leland Richardson about the Compose compiler, the runtime, data flow, and that nifty feature where Compose knows when to call your composable based on changes in data state. That's it for this time. We hope you enjoyed Google I.O. this year. We had lots of great updates around Jetpack, Android 12 and privacy, tooling, Kotlin large screens, Wear OS, Android TV, on-device machine learning, testing, not game development, and Google Play. Listen to the Graphics and Compose podcasts, and please come back here soon for the next update from the Android developer universe.